In today's video, I am going to give you three secrets on how you can become a much better center in basketball. Whether you're a center right now or you think you may be in the future, definitely watch this video all the way to the end. There's some really good tips in this video that I think could really help you excel in this position. So this first tip and this first secret is something that a player that I've helped in the past, Fiondu, he played for the Clippers for a while. Um, he did really well in the low post and that was keeping his head on a swivel. So when you have this ball in the low post and you're posting up a player, what you want to do is to keep your head on a swivel. You never know when you've got a player on your team who's cutting and their defender is not paying attention to them. They're paying attention to you because you have the ball. So first off, when you get this ball, what you want to do is to keep your head on a swivel. Make sure you can even arch your back to try and create some space. But when you can look around, look for players who are cutting baseline. Because what will happen some days, sometimes is let's say this ball is here. This is you, okay? Sometimes what you'll find is the help side defender on this side, he'll start playing too far into the middle of the key. And when that happens, you could have a player who's cutting baseline on that side. And guess what? You can send up a nice alley-oop and he'll have a nice slam dunk or of course an alley-oop or you could even if, if this weak side or help side defender comes up too high, you can just do a nice quick bounce pass down, whether it's a behind the back pass like that or whatever it may be, if he's cutting down, you can get some nice easy assists. Something that I teach every single player who is a center or who wants to work on their low post skills is this next tip. And that is when you are posting up, you really actually want to post up generally somewhere around this block, maybe the first hash mark, whatever it may be, but somewhere in this area. However, there's a kicker to this. When you receive that pass, you don't want to get the ball here. You want to get the ball out there. So when you get this ball, you want to hop into it and land on both feet. This is a massive, massive tip. By landing on both feet, now you have the ability to use either your right foot as the pivot or your left. Obviously you can't use both, but you can now choose. So it all comes down to how your defender is now defending you. If he's defending you on this hip, you can start going towards this side. If he's defending you on this hip, you can go baseline. This gives you options. So by starting somewhere along the side of the key, getting that ball and hopping out, you want to be roughly at that first hash mark and about two big steps out. This is going to give you room to operate so that you can get to that rim. Now it doesn't matter if you receive this ball and you're like this, it also doesn't matter if you receive the ball and you're like this. This both gives you different options anyways as it is. It all comes down to footwork. However, what I'm basically trying to say today is just trying to land on both feet so that now you have options onto which side you want to go on. Now my third secret is not necessarily a secret anymore. There's more and more players who are centers who are being called upon to shoot threes. There's more and more centers who are playing the high post. Back when I was younger, all the centers used to play down here in the low post. And this is a fun area to be in. You can really get really physical. It's a lot of fun. However, there's more and more teams that are running horns offenses, five out offenses, four out, one in, things like this. Maybe a, a one, three, one style zone offense, whatever it may be. And more and more players who are centers are either getting stuck out in the three point line or they're getting stuck at the high post, which is the free throw line. Is this good? Is this bad? Not necessarily. However, what this is doing for you is now you have to know as a center, hey, I need to be able to shoot. And we're seeing this with players like Zach Eady, who don't really take many shots outside of 15 feet, which is roughly the free throw line area there. And he needs to start really stretching his range. Does this mean that he needs to tomorrow be able to shoot 40% from three? No, but you can work on your shooting and that's really going to spread out your game. So once you get your shooting form down, once you feel comfortable shooting the ball, you really want to work on in-game movements so that you can shoot the ball confidently in-game. And one move that you can do is, of course, just running to the high post, which is the elbow right here, receiving that ball, landing on both feet. You always, around the post, you always want to land on both feet. And I've already mentioned that. Because now you can turn this way, you can take that shot, you can receive that ball, land on both feet, you can turn this way, you can take that shot. There are so many different options that you can get 
from landing on both feet, whether it's the low post or high post. However, when you start being able to stretch out to the three, let's say you're somebody like a Chet Holmgren or maybe a Victor Webinyamia who can shoot from three, you can then start working on in-game movements from three. So there's a few different spots in the court that you need to know of. There's the corner, then there is the wing up top over here at the free throw line extended, and then there's the point. And then it's the same thing on the other side. Basically, off-ball movements are extremely important, especially when it comes to a five-out offense, which more and more teams are running. So if you're going from the corner and let's say you've got a player who is driving down this side, you don't really want to sit in this corner, and there's a reason for that. You're going to have your defender who pops down to play help defense most likely, and then if you stay here, this is a much easier spot for your defender to come back out to defend your shot, because now what's gonna happen is he already knows where you are, you haven't moved, he's going to be able to return to you much faster. So what you wanna do is if you've got a player cutting on this side or driving on this side, you wanna move up to the wing because now you have less defenders around here. Your defender's down in the low post playing D. He can kick that ball out. And now, believe me, this is a much easier shot anyways because you're on an angle from the backboard. At least for me, it's a much higher percentage shot anyways. But movements like these, corner to wing, wing to corner, whatever it may be. If you've got, if you're in the wing and your player moves down to cut off a drive, you can cut baseline and you can get that ball to the corner and then take that shot. You have to move off ball and that's another secret especially for centers who are generally not moving at all anyways. And of course, knowing the angles as to where to get the rebound is also extremely important for a center. If the ball is being shot from that side, get your butt to this side, there's a high probability that the ball is going to hit the rim and continue its momentum over the rim, which will end up on that side. Anyways, I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.